socks and the hat on top Cold sunblock that I almost forgot Headed for the blue seashore Got my boogie oogie boogie boy Ever get the feeling where you find something that's really cool, but everyone else that likes it, or at least the loudest voices talking about it, annoy the hell out of you? We're not talking about Japanese anime. We're talking about American anime. Fuck, read the title. The title says Japanese anime Making suck. Making animation, most of the time the characters are missing a finger or instead of... Shut up! For example, one could say anime fans are, well, the problem with anime, and few examples permeate this point better than Free and Free Eternal Summer, hotly followed by Free Eternal Winter, The Brevity of Our Brotherhood. The series was released in the summer of 2013, it was produced by the highly notable Kyoto Animation, and directed by Hiroko Itsumi. From conception to its dub, the series has been, for whatever reason, kind of a lightning rod for mainstream hot topic uh, discussion that really highlights the ugly sides of the community. The anime's inception, which started with a 30 second ad, Big things have small beginnings. Steamrolled a brief but loud and hypocritical reaction by some Kyoto animation fans, unable to comprehend that a studio might want to cater to a different audience with a show about cute boys derping about in high school, and water, lots and lots of water. But while Free may have been marked by controversy, the show isn't defined by it. Perhaps one of the silliest mistakes an anime fan can make about the show is to write it off as a simple pandering wet dream material or yaoi exclusive. The series, taken in and of itself, is a short, sweet, well-paced slice of life about cute boys doing cute things and getting wet a lot. It was really good. Spoiler alert, I liked it. It's about friends learning, swimming, competing, being stupid. Seriously, do you even know what that water's like? Did the writers even look at a real fish tank before scripting this scene? That's nasty. Like most slice of life, the overarching story is pretty simple. Four Calvin Klein models, plus one, try to start a school club, then compete and win competitions. Kind of like Kiriko's Basketball Meets K-On, it's a slice of life sports anime that lends itself to yaoi fanfiction. And there's drama with old sores, literally, frenemy rivalries and romantic tension, but no nipples, interestingly enough. One thing you may have heard this anime described as is a uh, reverse harem. Now let me make something perfectly clear. As a completely subjective and biased viewer-reviewer, this series is not a reverse harem. Oran High School Host Club is a reverse harem. This piece of shit is a reverse harem. Free is neither a deconstruction nor does it fit into the harem category in the slightest. It isn't about a bunch of guys vying for a bland curry self-inserts affection. God. Isn't even a main character, really. They're all just friends, so unless it's a girl's wet dream to be friend-zoned by a bunch of really hot guys, then I rest my case. Anyway, there's a lot of applicability with a K-On comparison to Free. Not just because they have similar art styles and were made by the same studio and partially by the same director, but when considering the characters' relationships to each other, Free's cast is something you'd probably get if you took a bunch of girls from shows about cute girls doing cute things and gave them all penises and shorter hair. More often than not, these guys act like stereotypical moe girls. They get scared of the dark, have nights out, sit around campfires, share stories about crushes, talk about their feelings, play dress-up gender. What is that? On a less sexist note, you could honestly re-replace the character's gender and their personalities would feel stereotypically less out of place. And this is the reason I use the phrase cute boys doing cute things, because it brings to mind K-On! And Free is effectively K-On! Except it is better story, pacing, developed characters, and things actually happen. Also replace the cake and tea with mackerel. In addition, with a couple of exceptions, very little of the romance is directly concrete. You could say Haruka-chan and Rin-chan are just bros that really, really like each other. Or you could look at their relationship and infer that they are bros that really, really like each other and are gay. Personally, I didn't really see that, especially when it is obviously Kasumi and Haruka that belong together. Oh. 
To me, Rin and Haruka were two old friends that, due to normal life happenings, had grown apart, but through gaining perspective from their surrounding friendships, learned to put their own relationship back together. So let's talk about the characters for a second. We have Haruka, or Haruka-chan, a strong, silent man whose overriding principle can be summed up in the series title. Free. He wants to be free. And water. <sighs> Makoto is a friendly support who seems to be content with not being the best in the bundle, but quite empathetic. He is, by more than a margin, my favorite favorite character, I think because I relate to him the most. Nagisa, a different Nagisa, is effectively honey from Oran High School Host Club if he was taller and worked out and wasn't a complete twat. He acts as the primary plot driving device for the first half of the first season, outgoing, forward, cheerful, love sweets. He has a thing for Ray, he thinks. Maybe. Probably. Definitely. <laughs> Speaking of the prick, Ray was the character that surprised me the most in that when he's first introduced, I really didn't think I was going to like him. Really? Are you a robot? But his character does a surprising 180 from a dedicated prick to a dedicated, nosy, compassionate individual. However, I do take a little issue with the portrayal of his swimming progression in the series, uh, just based on my own experiences with swim instruction. I just didn't feel his stroke development would have happened quite the way it was portrayed, but hey, I've been wrong before. Regarding the side characters, I really like Coach Sasabi. The guy went from pizza delivery boy to owner of his own pool. Fucking inspiration if you ask me. Gal is the only girl peer in the show so far, really, and not the main love interest because, as established earlier, Free is not a reverse harem. Yet, at least. But she loves muscles. Uh, male muscles, specifically. I think. Other than that, there's not really much to say about her, other than that she's passionate for the swim club. Despite not being able to swim, really, her brother is competing in the national championships and an Olympic hopeful, but she can't even swim? Her parents sent Rin to a fancy swimming school in Australia, but didn't bother to give his sister some swimming lessons. Okay. Either her folks are some misogynistic gits, or more likely the writers decided to sacrifice her character for a quick joke. If it's so simple, why haven't you done it already? Rin, the apparent recipient of Go's parents' financial support to pursue swimming, is the other main character next to Haruka. He is the very definition of his hair color, hot-blooded, temperamental, passionate, and aggressive. Effectively, Haruka is opposite in almost every way. They both love swimming, but not for the same reason. Haruka is content to just chill in the pool, and Rin lives to compete. He's also another character that I initially didn't like when he was first introduced, because he came across as an insecure asshole throwing hissy fit, but gradually grew into a really likable character and a respectable leader as he learns what about the power. What's wrong with your teeth, Rin? It's like they're supposed to be like a shark. Speaking of Rin, I would like to touch on the controversy of the Vic Mignogna dub. If you're not familiar with what I'm talking about, the gist of it is some of the anime's fans wanted voice actor Vic Mignogna to sign some yaoi fan art of the character he was to voice act, Rin. And he refused, so apparently this makes him openly gay and a homophobe. Okay, guys. Just because a series lends itself to homoerotic tension doesn't mean it's canon. It may be canon to you, and I myself would consider that a reasonable interpretation of the story, but in the words of Dr. Sigmund Freud, sometimes cute girls doing cute things are just cute girls doing cute things. No homo. And you are right, it is 2015. While there still are significant gains to be made for gays and other identities, there is also, in this day and age, at least in the West, enough general acceptance and even embrace of non-heterosexual behavior where these identities, especially a fairly mainstream one like straight up gay pun intended, shouldn't be so insecure that the very idea of someone who holds a disapproving thought of your identity should be immediately crucified. And for what? 
because he politely declined to sign your pornography collection. If this was a situation of a proselyzing degenerate expressing hate for the LGBTQ community, as this petition would have you believe, then it's a different story and yeah, crucify him. But I would like to respectfully submit that this isn't the case. You come up to me and you say, would you sign this for me? Oh, <laughs> ew. Uh, you know what, sweetie? Um, I really don't feel comfortable signing these kind of things, but I would love to sign something else for you. And furthermore, like it or not, this guy is a Christian. He went to Liberty University for God's sake, I assume. And while his religious identity isn't synonymous with anti-homosexual sentiment, unfortunately it often accompanies it, generally depending on the denomination. His Christianity is an important identity to him, at least publicly, so yes, there is a possibility, perhaps even a probability that, deep down at least, he may not approve of homosexual behavior. World, I love gay people. <laughs> I have some very good friends that are gay. Yeah, I'm homophobic. I have gay friends. Now, is it my lifestyle? No, but that's fine. Again, right? It's not my thing, but uh, who am I to condemn you? Vic Manana should be a politician. Notice how he talked around the issues more than the issue itself. Self, did you want him to use his celebrity-ish platform for proselytization? Or would you prefer that he keep it to himself? What? Gay marriage. What is my... <laughs> really? What? Do I really want to answer that? Uh... If I don't answer and I'm a coward, well I can oh. promise you I'm not a coward, my friend. So I'm going to walk right up to your face and tell you what I think, okay? Here's what I think. The people should rule this country, not the government. Now, if this issue of gay acceptance and embrace is of sufficient importance to you and you truly believe that deep down in his soul Vic Mignogna harbors judgment on homosexual behavior, and if that mere sentiment is so strong in its offense to you it outweighs any gains brought on by having a dub by a talented voice actor who voiced one of the coolest characters in one of the best anime shows of all time, then by all means sign the petition. I included the link to it below. And I won't judge, or maybe I will, deep down inside. But regardless of what I think, consider the precedent you're setting for yourself, that to be morally consistent you'd have to refuse the goods and services from anyone whose beliefs might clash with your own on this particular issue. And you can sort these undesirables out. Certain paraphernalia and manner of dress can distinguish persons of social and religious background who you could suspect, perhaps rightly, would morally object to the idea of Rin and Haruka's unheavenly relationship. And if you haven't met the individual in person, don't worry. Anonymous comments on the internet provide all the background you need to render judgment but maybe you don't care about that. After all, humans are hardly the most consistent of things. Maybe Rin and Haruka are a couple, and Free is objectively a gay anime, and anyone who just can't get behind that idea simply cannot be on the production team. And to that, I would reply no. Free is subjectively gay, and your ship's in port while the SS Kasumi Haruka sailed stat with the second season, so you're fucking wrong! But the link's down below. Regardless, I think I've made my point. In summary, I myself would recommend watching the first episode of the series, which pretty much sets the tone for both seasons. If you like it, feel free to watch it. It has its dramatic moments with significant undertones, but doesn't stray too far from its comfort zone. The show is generally lighthearted. When it tries to be funny, it usually is, and the competition scenes make for some truly intense moments. I generally prefer to watch content English dubbed, and I don't remember having this much fun with an anime despite subtitles. Is it for everyone? No, nothing is. But if you like Slice of Life in general, you'll probably find something to appreciate here. In closing, I echo the words from the great Gigoksama, who once said, or twice, that he judges an anime based on its fans, and I absolutely cannot agree with this. When it comes to free, set aside the fans and the drama and consider the series for what it is, an enjoyable, upbeat slice of life sports anime that deserves a watch. Okay, I think I covered everything. Wait a second. <laughs> Ray better watch out.
there's a baby. Give you no quarter.